just beautiful wonderful way to start our worship this morning ah good morning and welcome to all everyone who's gathering here in the sanctuary and those who are joining us via zoom uh welcome and thank you to ski and ben for joining george uh this morning for our music we are truly blessed thank you um just a few announcements um just a reminder that next sunday from three to five in the afternoon our regional ministry network which is um set up by the diocese and geographic areas of parishes we are having our regional ministry network uh potluck picnic here at saint mark's from three to five if there's anyone who would like to join us for that um we would love to have you and please see the flyers 
in the hallway. Uh, also, just a save the date for September 17th. That will be our startup Sunday. The choir will be resuming their um, regular Sundays with us. And we'll also have our parish uh, picnic following. And, um, and we'll also be resuming the eight o'clock Holy Eucharist on that Sunday as well. The following Sunday, September 24th, is when we will be commissioning the church school teachers and the church school classes and starting our, um, our church school program. That'll be on the 24th. And just a reminder about communion. All are welcome to come forward and receive communion. At this point in time, um, if you would like to receive the wine, we are not in tincting, we are not dipping the bread into the wine at this time. Um, if you would like to receive the wine, you may drink directly from the chalice or reverently touch the base of the chalice. And if you would like to come up and receive a blessing, you can indicate that by putting your, your arms across your chest. Um, there is also healing prayer available during the administration of communion. So if you would like to come up and receive communion and then continue for healing prayer right outside of our sacristy doors, uh, you're welcome to come forward for that as well. And I hope you can join us for our coffee hour in Carroll Hall. And many thanks to Nancy and Kate and Denise for um, doing coffee hour this morning. And just a note, there is a sign-up sheet in there in Carroll Hall. Um, if you would like to help out with one of the upcoming Sundays, that would be wonderful. So um, again, thank you all very much for being here. And um, let us begin with our opening hymn. <laughs> Lord be with you. 
let us pray. Almighty God, you have given your only son to be for us a sacrifice for sin and also an example of godly life. Give us grace to receive thankfully the fruits of his redeeming work and to follow daily in the blessed steps of his most holy life. Through Jesus Christ, your son, our Lord, who lives and reigns with you in the Holy Spirit, one God, now and forever. Amen. Amen. Please be seated. A reading from the book of Genesis. Joseph could no longer control himself before all those who stood by him. And he cried out, send everyone away from me. So no one stayed with him when Joseph made himself known to his brothers. And he wept so loudly that the Egyptians heard it and the household of Pharaoh heard it. Joseph said to his brothers, I am Joseph. Is my father still alive? But his brothers could not answer him. So dismayed were they at his presence. Then Joseph said to his brothers, come closer to me. And they came closer. He said, I am your brother, Joseph, whom you sold into Egypt. And now do not be distressed or angry with yourselves because you sold me here. For God sent me before you to preserve life. For the famine has been in the land these two years, and there are five more years in which there will be neither plowing nor harvest. God sent me before you to preserve for you a remnant on earth and to keep alive for you many survivors. So it was not you who sent me here, but God. He has made me a father to Pharaoh and Lord of all his house and ruler over all the land of Egypt. Hurry and go up to my father and say to him, thus says your son, Joseph, God has made me Lord of all Egypt. Come down to me. Do not delay. You shall settle in the land of Goshen and you shall be near me. You and your children and your children's children, as well as your flocks, your herds, and all that you have. I will provide for you there, since there are five more years of famine to come, so that you and your household and all that you have will not come to poverty. And now your eyes and the eyes of my brother Benjamin see that it is my own mouth that speaks to you. You must tell my father how greatly I am honored in Egypt and all that you have seen. Hurry and bring my father down here. Then he fell upon his brother Benjamin's neck and wept while Benjamin wept upon his neck. And he kissed all his brothers and wept upon them. And after that, his brothers talked with him. Hear what the spirit is saying to the church. Be to God. Oh, how good and pleasant it is. It is like fine oil upon the head, upon the beard of Aaron. It is like the dew of Hermon, for there the Lord has ordained the blessing. The Holy Gospel of our Savior Jesus Christ, according to Matthew. Glory to you, Lord Christ. Jesus called the crowd to him and said to them, Listen and understand. It is not what goes into the mouth that defiles a person, but it is what comes out of the mouth that defiles. Then the disciples approached and said to him, Do you know that the Pharisees took offense when they heard what you said? He answered, every plant that my heavenly father has not planted will be uprooted. Let them alone. They are blind guides of the blind. 
And if one blind person guides another, both will fall into a pit. But Peter said to him, explain this parable to us. Then he said, are you also still without understanding? Do you not see that whatever goes into the mouth enters the stomach and goes out into the sewer? But what comes out of the mouth proceeds from the heart, and this is what defiles. For out of the heart come evil intentions, murder, adultery, fornication, theft, false witness, slander. These are what defile a person, but to eat with unwashed hands does not defile. Jesus left that place and went away to the district of Tyre and Sidon. Just then a Canaanite woman from that region came and started shouting, have mercy on me, Lord, son of David. My daughter is tormented by a demon. But he did not answer her at all. And his disciples came and urged him saying, send her away for keep, she keeps shouting after us. He answered, I was sent only to the lost sheep of the house of Israel. But she came and knelt before him saying, Lord, help me. He answered, it is not fair to take the children's food and throw it to the dogs. She said, yes, Lord, yet even the dogs eat the crumbs that fall from their master's table. Then Jesus answered her, woman, great is your faith. Let it be done for you as you wish. And her daughter was healed instantly. The Gospel of the Lord. May the words of my mouth and the meditations of our hearts be always acceptable in your sight, O Lord, our rock and our redeemer. Amen. Amen. In our gospel reading this morning, we have two stories with the themes of clean and unclean, inside and outside, running through both. Much like the story of the Canaanite woman, Jesus's parable raises questions about the understanding of the boundaries of God's mercies. The Pharisees had been pointing out how everything the disciples had been doing, eating, thinking, and saying was just wrong. Pointing this out also as a way of showing how everything they, the Pharisees, had been doing was right. Those disciples of Jesus just don't get it. And Jesus responds, so you think you're all that because you keep all the rules and eat the right stuff? Do you think that makes you pure of heart? It's not what goes into the mouth that defiles, he says, but what comes out of it? For out of the human heart comes evil intention, murder, adultery, just to name a few. And so, of course, we, and I have to imagine the disciples here think, those Pharisees, they just don't get it. And then we are told Jesus left that place and went into the district of Tyre and Sidon. This is Gentile country a region that had been home to many enemies of the Jewish people over the ages. And it is remarkable that Jesus would have even visited such a place. And this is where the Canaanite woman, deemed as unclean, impure, comes shouting for mercy and healing for her daughter. And the disciples, perhaps feeling a bit superior, find this shouting annoying, annoying to say the least. And they urge Jesus to get rid of this woman, to send her away. And much has been written 
over many, many years trying to explain or figure out why Jesus seems to act like such a stoop nagel here, as my Aunt Dot would say. <laughs> such a stoop nagel by first ignoring this Canaanite woman and mother and then replying to her, it is not fair to take the children's food and throw it to the dogs. Is he testing this woman? Is Jesus's response tainted by the fact that the Canaanites had been old enemies of the Jewish people? Is he including the mother and daughter with the other residents of Tyre who had recently oppressed the local Jews? Or is Jesus in fact addressing her harshly because he does feel that he needs to focus his mission on the Jews? Although Jesus's motives are not clear, his refusal is, and his refusal is unsettling to say the least, and totally out of character with our usual image of our merciful and compassionate teacher, healer, and savior. Have mercy on me, Lord, she is shouting. This is the same word that's used for the disciples crying out in the boat in the storm. This is desperation and fear. And she kneels before him, Lord, help me. She knows that even the dogs eat the crumbs that fall from their master's table. And so Jesus responds, woman, great is your faith, and her daughter is healed. In addition to this outsider woman challenging Jesus here, I think her actions also call out the narrow understandings of God's mercy held by both the Pharisees and apparently the disciples here. I think of the story of the Pharisee and the tax collector found in Luke chapter 18, the story where they both go up to the temple to pray. And when the Pharisee says, Lord, thank you that I am not like the robbers or that tax collector. And as the tax collector, collector stands at a distance and prays, God have mercy on me, a sinner. And Jesus asks, who is justified before God? The righteous one who prays, thank you that I am not like that sinner, or the sinner who prays, God have mercy on me a sinner. As soon as we say, thank God I am not like that guy, like that racist politician, or like anyone else we see as other, as soon as we do that, we become that Pharisee. And when are we the ones who get annoyed at those we might see as annoying, who remind us that there really are very real needs for healing in our world. Do we wish God would just send them away? Dear God, have mercy on me, a sinner. At the funeral that we had here a week ago for Mrs. Harris, we sang the hymn selected by the family, There's a Wideness in God's Mercy. And it's been running through my head all week. I won't try to sing it. 
but I will share the lyrics. But we make God's love too narrow by false limits of our own. And we magnify its strictness with a zeal God will not own. For the love of God is broader than the measures of the mind and the heart of the eternal is most wonderfully kind. This Canaanite mother understood that God's grace, mercy, and healing have always been for all, especially for those deemed as outside, unclean, as other. And maybe even this Canaanite mother in desperation just took a chance on this Jesus and would not let go until he opened his arms wider, wider and sharing God's grace, mercy, and healing. May each of us love as fiercely, as tenaciously as this mother. May we too have the faith to shout after Jesus, seeking his mercy and grace and expecting him to heal and to save. Amen. Let us stand and profess our faith in the words of the Nicene Creed. We believe in one God, the Father, the Almighty, maker of heaven and earth, of all that is seen and unseen. We believe in one Lord, Jesus Christ, the only Son of God, who eternally begotten of the Father, God from God, light from light, true God from true God, begotten, not made, of one being with the Father. Through him all things were made. For us and for our salvation, he came down from heaven. By the power of the Holy Spirit, he became incarnate from the Virgin Mary and was made man. For our sake, he was crucified under Pontius Pilate. He suffered death and was buried. On the third day, he rose again in accordance with the scriptures. He ascended into heaven and is seated at the right hand of the Father. He will come again in glory to judge the living and the dead, and his kingdom will have no end. We believe in the Holy Spirit, the Lord, the giver of life, who proceeds from the Father and the Son, with the Father and the Son, which has been glorified. He has spoken to the prophets. We believe in one holy Catholic and apostolic church. We acknowledge our baptism to the forgiveness of sins. We look for the resurrection of the dead and the life of the world to come. Amen. Like the Canaanite woman, let us shout out to the Lord for mercy and offer prayers for all in desperate need. Let us pray for the church and for the world. We pray for all Christians everywhere for Michael, our presiding bishop, for Carly, our bishop, for Joan and Jim, our priests, and for the family of St. Mark's. Gracious God, may your spirit give strength to all your people as they work and witness in your world. Unite us in your truth and love and help us to show your love to others. God of love. Amen. <coughs> We pray for all people or places where there is war or famine, especially Ukraine and Sudan. God, our creator, help everyone to share all the good gifts that you have given to us. May those who lead the nations of the world be given wisdom. Especially we pray for Joe, Kamala, and Phil. God of love. Prayer. We pray for our community and all who live and work in this area. God, our friend, we pray for our family and friends. 
May we be able to help each other just as you love and help us. God of love, <coughs> we pray for those in need, for those in hospitals, and for those with any other problems, and we pray especially for the people of Maui. Compassionate God, give your strength and healing for those who are sad, lonely, or sick. Bless all those who try to help them. We pray for those on St. Mark's prayer list or prayer chain. God of love. Pray. We remember all those who have died, especially Patty, sister-in-law of Yana, Barbara, Mary, and Sheila. God of hope, we thank you that not even death can separate us from your love. We pray for all who mourn, that they may feel your care for them. We pray also for the hundreds of individuals who lost their lives in our country this past week because of the senseless use of guns. Wayne Hall, Jr., Rochester, New York. Elijah Martin, Indianapolis, Indiana. <clears throat> Antoine Desmond Melvin, John Birch, and Patrick Lassiter, Daytona Beach, Florida. Daria A. Lathan, H5, Belleville, Illinois. Tynesha Houston, Pasadena, California. Philip Loveday, Corpus Christi, Texas. Alvin Eugene Holliday, Derek Rico Jones, and Monroe McGilvery Jr., Newport News, Virginia. Amare W. Gita, Seattle, Washington. Delvin Long, Fort Lauderdale, Florida. Edgar Lopez, Covington, Kentucky. And Israel Teniente, Madison, Tennessee. God of love. <clears throat> we pray for ourselves, all that we do this week and all those we will meet. We give special thanks for those who are celebrating birthdays and anniversaries this week especially Razikwe, Julia, Karen, Edwin, Rodney, Elizabeth, Damien, Caleb, and Edward, and the anniversaries of David and Cecily, Joseph and Carol, and Jim and Liz. Loving God, we give this week into your hands. Be with us in all that we do. May we enjoy this week and learn and grow in it. God of love, our prayer. dear people of God, what else or who else should we pray for? For all those in the path of the hurricane in Southern California. For all of our young people preparing to leave for college and for their families. Those things, O oh God, that your servants have prayed for, give us grace to work for, and in the purpose of your love, answer our prayers and fulfill our hopes. For Jesus' sake. Amen. Help us to transform our own hearts and to seek peaceful ways of resolving our differences. Let our hands reach out and connect with those who feel alone, those who live in fear, and those suffering from mental illness. Let our voices be raised, asking our legislators to enact gun laws to protect all in our society, especially those most vulnerable. Let our pens write messages demanding change while also scripting words of hope and transformation. We ask this in the name of the God who desires that we live together in peace. Amen. Amen. God of infinite love, you heal those who call on you. Have mercy on us miserable sinners and grant our prayers for all the world through Jesus Christ, our Lord. Amen. And let us confess our sins against God and our neighbor. Most merciful God, we confess that we have sinned against you in thought, word, and deed by what we have done and by what we have left undone. We have not loved you with our whole heart. We have not loved our neighbors as ourselves. We are truly sorry and we humbly repent. For the sake of your Son, Jesus Christ, have mercy on us and forgive us. The 
and his life in your will, and walk in your ways, to the glory of your name. Amen. Almighty God, have mercy on you, forgive you all your sins for our Lord Jesus Christ, strengthen you in all goodness, and by the power of the Holy Spirit, keep you in eternal life. Amen. The peace of the Lord be always with you. Walk in love as Christ loved us and gave himself for us, an offering and sacrifice to God. Please be seated.
Let us give thanks to the Lord our God. It is right to give God thanks and praise. It is truly right and good and joyful to give you thanks, all holy God, source of life and fountain of mercy. You have filled us and all creation with your blessing and fed us with your constant love. You have redeemed us in Jesus Christ and knit us into one body. Through your spirit, you replenish us and call us to fullness of life. Therefore, joining with angels and archangels and with the faithful of every generation, we lift our voices with all creation as we sing. and giver of life. You formed us in your own image and called us to dwell in your infinite love. You gave the world into our care that we might be your faithful stewards and show forth your bountiful grace. But we failed to honor your image in one another and in ourselves. We would not see your goodness in the world around us. And so we violated your creation, abused one another and rejected your love. Yet you never cease to care for us and prepared the way of salvation for all people. Through Abraham and Sarah, you called us into covenant with you. You delivered us from slavery, sustained us in the wilderness, and raised up prophets to renew your promise of salvation. Then, in the fullness of time, you sent your eternal word, made mortal flesh in Jesus. Born into the human family and dwelling among us, he revealed your glory, giving himself freely to death on the cross. He triumphed over evil, opening the way of freedom and life. On the night before he died for us, our Savior Jesus Christ took bread. And when he had given thanks to you, he broke it and gave it to his friends and said, Take, eat, this is my body which is given for you. Do this for the remembrance of me. As supper was ending, Jesus took the cup of wine, and when he had given thanks, he gave it to them and said, Drink this, all of you. This is my blood of the new covenant, which is poured out for you and for all for the forgiveness of sins. Whenever you drink it, do this for the remembrance of me. Therefore, we proclaim the mystery of faith. Christ has died. Christ is risen. Christ will come again. Remembering his death and resurrection, we now present to you from your creation this bread and this wine. By your Holy Spirit, may they be for us the body and blood of our Savior, Jesus Christ. Grant that we who share these gifts may be filled with the Holy Spirit and live as Christ's body in the world. Bring us into the everlasting heritage of your daughters and sons, that with all your saints, past, present, and yet to come, we may praise your name forever. Through Christ and with Christ and in Christ and the unity of the Holy Spirit, to you be honor, glory, and praise forever and ever. Amen. Amen. As our Savior Christ has taught us, we now pray. Our Father in heaven, hallowed be your name. Your kingdom come, your will be done on earth as in heaven. Give us today our daily bread. Forgive us our sins as we forgive those who sin against us. Save us from the time of trial and deliver us from evil. For the kingdom, the power, and the glory are yours now and forever. Amen. Alleluia, Christ our Passover is sacrificed for us. Therefore, let us keep the peace. Alleluia. 
the gifts of God for the people of God. Take them in remembrance that Christ died for you and feed on him in your hearts by faith with thanksgiving.
Let us pray. God of abundance, you have fed us with the bread of life and cup of salvation. You have united us with Christ and one another, and you have made us one with all your people in heaven and on earth. Now send us forth in the power of your spirit, that we may proclaim your redeeming love to the world and continue forever in the life of Christ our Savior. Amen. And the blessing of God Almighty, the Father, the Son, and the Holy Spirit be upon you this day and remain with you always. Amen.
does it. Every week, somebody different, something a little, something for everyone. And mostly to see your faces every week. It's terrific. And these beautiful flowers today, I think that's, is that Grace? Grace Mary, the flowers. Wow, the preaching, everything together. Wonderful day. Have a great week. Bye. Thank you.